So let's talk about MJ. Um, how did that come about? Was it an audition? Was it a, first of all, before we get to MJ, do you still have to audition for everything or do you get offered some stuff now? I don't know how it works when I, it comes to, to plays. Yeah, I think when it comes to Broadway, once you've done a lead role or two, especially if you get a Tony nomination, they start to, um, they start to hand out, not hand out, but they start to say, uh, we want you to play this part. We know that you can play this part. Or because they've seen you, they've, like, they've seen you sing and dance. They know, you know, and they, ha they can see you as different parts. So they kind of understand your range as an actor or like they, they at least believe you. So for me, uh, playing David Ruffin was my audition for MJ. They came, that whole production team came and saw Ain't Too Proud and was like, yo, this cat is, can perform on the level of like, and not not on the level of an MJ, like I'm at his level, but like, you know what I'm saying? In terms no, of like, I understand. You know, and you're not, saying you're better than know. Michael Jackson. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we joking. <laughs> no, so they called me up after, that's actually right after the Tony Awards and all that. And they're like, yo, uh, my agents called in like, yo, definitely they're interested in you playing Michael. They want to know if you know, got a workshop coming up. They want you to play him. I was like, uh, what? Nice. And so it was an offer. It was an offer, yeah. Ooh, beast. Uh, so that starts to happen more. But yeah, no, there's still, still stuff, especially like, again, TV film, they don't know who the hell I am. So they're like, no, who you, you still got to trust, bro. Um, but for MJ, yeah, it was, it was through that. The work art, like I said, work begets work. Um, so that's kind of how that came about. Did you have any hesitation about hell taking yeah. that role? Hell yeah, man. At first, first of all, I'm a huge MJ fan, like for real, for real. Mm -hmm. And um, hearing the, about them making the Michael Jackson musical, I'm just like, <laughs> I don't know, like what? what? And that's just being a fan like, of Michael Jackson, right? Is why you had yeah. that thought, right? Yeah, exactly. Just because, like you know, a lot of people want to get ready to do shows about Michael Jackson. They got stuff in Vegas. They got stuff in London. It's just like these uh, for me, kind of like I don't, I don't want to shit on nobody, but like kind of for me as a fan and as an artist, kind of lackluster because it does nothing to tell. I think like his real story, mm -hmm. even though. And at the same time, for me, I'm also skeptical because like, how do you tell this man's story? This man's career encompasses 50, 50 years or something like that. Going from like this to that and all the questions in between, like they're parts of his life. And I feel like there's ways, things that we'll just never even know. You know what I'm saying? Like this cat is like, it's, it's next level. So I'm like, how, how are you going to even attempt to tell that story? What is the story gonna, that you're trying to tell? And B, who's telling it? You know what I'm saying? And why? You know, there's all those questions are going through my mind. I don't want to be a part of something that I feel is like a, a bullshit, you know, jukebox musical where we just come together and celebrate, you know, his right, greatest no, straight hits. Up. I don't want to do that. Like, you know, you can go to the Vegas show for that, you know, just to watch somebody impersonate Michael Jackson and uh, just sing, sing his songs and, you know what I mean, and try to look at, like him and mimic him. It's like, I don't want to do that. Cause it's, now, that, let, me, let, me, let me ask you a question. Are you going to get your nose done like he did in that picture? Wait a minute. I'm trying yeah, to... Yeah, I got surgery. <laughs> he got <the> surgery. <laughs> <laughs> I nah, get it. Man. Um, no, nah, man, my MJ is a legend, man. Um, cause when I saw that news come out, I was like, holy shit. You know, I, I was elated and only because I saw you sing in ain't too proud is why when I yeah. saw that, I said, he can do it. There was, there hey, was, there was no thought. Like, I don't know. I'm like, ah, cause you know, I'm your nigga, you know, not that I would have told you, but <laughs> I would have been thinking like, I don't know. You know. But but when I but because I saw you A two proud when I saw that news I said he could do it. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. I'm I'm still literally like this this uh, pandemic has been a blessing too because it's giving me extra time to train because yeah it, that thing was ain't too proud David Ruffin times ten you know what I mean in terms of trying to do because I did a workshop for uh, MJ back in the fall and that thing you know Michael Jackson songs are so high right <laughs> especially the the amount of dancing he's doing bro it's like. And it's, you know, and singing like David Ruffin is like the opposite of singing like Michael Jackson in a lot of ways, you know what mm. I mean? But like, so I got so much training to do. So having this time off is giving me extra time just to keep working on it. Cause I got, I still got a long way to go. Um, but yeah, man, that's, it's, it's an incredible opportunity, bro. Like this is the, this is one job, the one role that like, I will say it's kind of like a dream role for me. I've, I, I knew I've always wanted to be Michael Jackson since I was a little boy, you know what I'm saying? Like I've, he's, he's, uh, my, my, he was always my hero like that. So, you know, I can't believe this dream is actually coming true. And I'm getting the, like, I'm out here in LA right now training for it. You know what I mean? Working with cats that are telling me stories about them because they knew him one on one. And you know what I mean? Like, it's so just, why, it's why really are you in LA just because the trainers are in LA? Why don't they do it in New York versus LA? Well, 
truth be told, like, I, uh, we had all this time off, you know what I mean? And, like, they're like, all right, y'all, everything shut down at least till January. I wanted to go home during this point. I went down to Florida to see my folks. That's where I saw you. Right. Um, but I've always had, to, I've always wanted to do, do like a, a cross country road trip. Like, you know what I gotcha. mean? Like driving. I want, I stopped in the Grand Canyon for a couple of days. You know what I mean? Crazy. Like being a couple of friends. So I wanted to do something like that. And I knew I was like, yo, whenever I get free time, I want to pop out to LA and just chill. I always like to do that. And I knew that the uh, choreographers, they live here. Um, so I was like, as opposed to them, you know, trying to fly into New York. And also like, yo, it's New York in the pandemic. It's 10 million people all stacked on top of each other. I need some space. Right. So I was like, yo, I'm going to hop in the whip. I'm going to drive cross country. I'm going to get to LA, have me some space. And um, I was hit, I hit up these choreographers and see, you know, if I can just work with them in a private setting uh, for like a month or so. So that was just my idea just to like to take advantage of this extra time, but also get some space from New York. So just kind of. Sweet, 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 sweet.